I, I come to, we have our, I'm told I'm selected, and Venturi is selected for the main space, and uh, Sarah is selected as the, arc, the artist for the, uh, the sculptor for the space. So we all meet in Washington, and there's, I forget the guy's name, but some really is a, is a mindless administrator says, look, guys, <coughs> let's have some fun. All of you design everybody else's space, which is a, a license for disaster, by the way. So I feel very uncomfortable. I, said, I got the plaza. Let me, you know, let me do the plaza. So the, we all go away. Venturi has his eye on the, on the plaza. He's gotten Pershing, by the way. That's his commission. And he's got it with a landscape architect George from Patton. George Patton. Okay? Venturi, who is a very manipulative person, comes to the first meeting with no one's supposed to have sketches, but a finished model of the plaza, sunken, commercial, and a map of Washington embossed into the paving. Well, it's an appealing idea. Everybody agrees, okay? And the Venturi lobbies the board, who he has some contacts with, for the commission. Meanwhile, I feel that I'm, and meanwhile, I feel I'm being undercut. And Sarah, who is who is really following what he should, you know, the, the rules, comes up with some ideas about til tilting the plaza, and he takes a sculptural approach, which I think was very interesting, not ap applicable but interesting. He's not a pleasant person either, by the way, but he's still his approach was uh, decent. Then the next step is Venturi comes back again with the same design raised up because they said we don't want it to be sunken. Okay, so he raises it up. And, but it's the same damn design. And then I am told that I should work with Venturi on both of these. So I, I, mean, so I will meet with Venturi and we'll see if I want to do it. Yeah. So I do and I meet with him in New York. He comes to New York and we have lunch. And we talk about it. I said, you know, I'll, I will work with you if we start in the beginning, if we discard what you've shown. He said, I don't want to do that. So I said, then I don't want to work with you. So then we had a competition. Okay, that was the next thing. We'll have a competition, and whoever wins the competition. We had the competition. The staff voted for my scheme, but the board voted for his. So we switched sites because of that. Okay, that's what happened. Really. So then Venturi goes on. He raises his plaza the number of feet that he does. He's supposed to have little marquettes on it, which get knocked, and also two pylons. Sarah hates the pylons, which is, he's a fascistic, is in Germany, goes to, uh, where did they have the, 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 the rallies, uh, this, the city that had the rallies in Germany? Uh, Nuremberg. Nuremberg. Goes to Nuremberg, takes pictures of Speer's work, shows it to, at the meeting, Shows it and calls Venturi a fascist. Uh, Sarah shows what he wants to do, and it's his tilted planes of steel that looks like a incinerator. Uh, the seven plane. He's done some beautiful work. I love his work, but this was not his what you, his his finest moment. It ends up where he is told to leave the <laughs> the project. I'm given the Pershing and Venturi. Venturi ends up getting his project stripped of everything but the quotes, the little buildings, which everyone thought would be too cute for words, and too kitsch, you know. The park turned out nicely, except Nat Owings was there. And Nat says, after it's designed, Nat says, I want it to be an ice skating rink. Now, by rights, the ice skating rink should have been the plaza. Okay. And it would have been big enough. To the, for an ice skating rink, though, you need a place, a bathroom. You need all kinds of other things, a place to change it. So we have more built underground than we do above ground. We have a, a, a Zamboni room, which is why the fountain looks the way it does, so that you can drive into the fountain. And we have a nice glass pavilion. There was a great deal of pressure to get the park finished. And the PADC uh, caved in to the, to the uh, contractors' uh, plea that they could not finish in time unless they built the pavilion out of plastic. And the pavilion 
They, they agreed. They built the, out of our, over our objections, they built it out of plastic. It subsequently looks like it needs to be totally redone, and it should be. And the, I don't know, the park seems now to, to need help. I don't know if it, uh, if it does, you know, I just drove by it. The water's not on. There seems to be a lot of problems with it, which is too bad. The, one of the times, though, that I came, I noticed that there was all kinds of plantings uh, in the, where we had, and at first I resented it, that we, but then as I, as I watched it over a period of time, the grasses and some of the other plantings were just so appropriate, and I began to, to realize that, you know, my own deficiency in the way I approach planting uh, is not, not as a, a live, energizing, you know, um, uh, facility or, or, or material, but as more of as a, as a staid uh, structural element. And, I, and I, in studying Olme van Sweden's approach, really began to see that it changed the character, the use of grasses and some of the other materials, literally changed, and, and Rudbeckius, literally changed the character. And then I saw philosophically two things happening, which I thought was quite beautiful. One is I had developed the so-called permanent structural frame, the stone steps and all that. And then as an overlay was this sort of temporary, temporary changing environment that the grasses and the plants gave it. So you have permanence and impermanence working together. You need the frame for organization and for discipline. And yet the plants gave it a an, sort of an uh, an ephemeral quality that I think was, as I say, that I thought was, was uh, quite exciting and, and, and different. And it changed my perception, again, like, uh, you know, of how plants could and should be used.